Elaine's perspective, the morning after. The next morning I was trying to get back into my usual routine, but my head was still buzzing from everything that had happened the day before. I was halfway through my second cup of coffee when Marie, my coworker, stuck her head into my cubicle, eyes wide with excitement. Did you hear what's happening? Oh my God, I can't believe it, she whispered, practically bouncing on her toes. No, what happened? I asked, spinning my chair to face her. Marie looked like she could barely contain herself. The owner of the company is here. He brought HR with him and they're interviewing everyone. The Ice Queen has been moved to the corporate office, no longer in a management role. My jaw dropped. Marie was practically dancing in front of me, unable to hide her glee. Holy shit, I said, my voice barely a whisper. What caused all that? Marie shrugged, grinning from ear to ear. Who knows? But I think someone finally figured out what a nightmare she was. I nodded, still reeling. I never expected anything like this. Mrs. Aldridge had been a fixture here, ruling with her cold demeanor and unforgiving nature. To think she was no longer in charge felt surreal, like the office might finally be able to breathe again. As I tried to process it all, my name was called, and I was told to go to the conference room. My heart pounded as I made my way there, wondering what this was about. The second I stepped inside, I froze. Sitting at the head of the table was Dick, the man I just chewed out over cupcakes, surrounded by a group of people from HR. He looked up at me with a calm, composed expression. Please take a seat, he said kindly, gesturing to the chair across from him. I sat down slowly, my mind racing. What was going on? Why was Dick here, sitting like he was in charge of something? He began asking me questions, and I realized he wasn't here for small talk. He wanted to know everything the inner workings of our office, the culture, the staff dynamics, and most importantly, about Mrs. Aldridge. I answered carefully, keeping my responses honest but diplomatic. I didn't want to throw anyone under the bus. I explained that Mrs. Aldridge was strict, that she demanded a lot, and that her management style was challenging. I even mentioned the positives. She was efficient, detail-oriented, and never missed a deadline. But I also gently pointed out that her approach often left people feeling overwhelmed and undervalued. Dick listened intently, nodding along and occasionally jotting down notes. The HR team watched quietly, taking in every word I said. I kept waiting for Dick to start grilling me about the cupcakes, but he never did. Instead, he just asked questions about the team, about morale and what I thought could make things better. Do you work in HR? I finally asked, unable to keep my curiosity at bay. One of the men sitting next to him snickered, quickly smothering it with a cough when Dick shot him a quelling glance. Dick turned back to me, his expression softening. Something like that, he said, a hint of amusement in his voice but offering no further explanation. I left the meeting still feeling like I'd missed something important. But one thing was clear, changes were coming, and whatever role Dick played in all of this, he was taking it seriously. The Ice Queen was gone, and the office already felt different, lighter, less tense. As I returned to my desk, I couldn't help but wonder what other surprises were in store. Whatever was happening, one thing was certain. The company was getting a fresh start, and maybe, just maybe, things were finally going to get better.